Film or video production is all about solving problems. It's a series of decisions aimed at achieving the desired results in the environment that you're in using the resources that you have at your disposal. Today, I'll walk you through an interview setup that I did for a corporate client and show you the various variables, challenges, and decisions you need to make to get the best possible results. Now, before we get started, check out my new online course, Essential Camera Settings, where I dive deep into camera settings and share tips and insights from over 20 years in the industry to help you start your filmmaking journey. You can find the link below along with a special discount just for you. I don't often film interviews in an office due to the limited space and having to rearrange the client's personal belongings. However, in this case, this office was our best option. Now, when I arrive on site of any shoot, I face dozens, if not hundreds of decisions to achieve the best possible results. My process generally involves three main steps. One, evaluating the space to identify all the variables. Two, finding the best shot. And three, lighting for that shot, or as I call it, solving problems. When evaluating a space, I consider many factors, like how big are the windows? What is the weather like outside? What is the sun's trajectory over the next few hours? How much depth can I achieve in this room? Can I control the lighting in the room? Where can I draw power from? These are just a few of the questions I need to address. In this example, the sky was cloudy with no direct sunlight coming through the window, so I knew I could balance the interior lighting to expose for the outside. The office had fluorescent lights and the switch in the room only controlled half the light, so I was able to turn off the lights directly above the desk, but the lights that were further down in the room, like above this little conference room table, remained on. They were kind of like emergency lights that you can't turn off. The more control I have over the lights, the better I can manage the color temperature and the exposure. It may not seem important, but I also think about things like, how is my client gonna reach the chair? I just wanna ensure that there is an open path, free of cables, free of light stands, that the boom mic is not in the way, just so that they can reach the chair um, efficiently and safely. So that's something I look at. So I'm gonna identify where the outlets are so I can run my cables the right way. So all those things I do really quickly by just assessing the room, trying to identify what my options are. Once I understand the space, the first thing I do is set up my camera and a monitor to find the best possible shot. And so I'll just point the camera in different area that I find interesting to see what it looks like on the monitor. Now, I also know that shooting towards a corner is the best way of creating depth and texture. So I avoid shooting straight at walls or at the windows. I also like this credenza with all the picture frames on it. I thought it would make a nice backdrop for the interview. So I just pointed my camera towards this corner and look at the monitor. Now, I really liked what those two lamps were doing in the frame. Like I just loved the way that looked. The problem is it's very challenging to insert and use practicals when you're in an uncontrolled environment. So um, you're gonna introduce different color temperature. You're gonna introduce flickering maybe of the light bulbs, um, different part of exposures that may be affected. And so it's always tricky to use practicals in a shot like this. Uh, but in this case, I thought um, that I could make it work. Now, originally when we turned this on, the two lamp at two different color temperature. One was warm, the other one was cool. I don't have those shots here because I took all those pictures after we were done setting up. Um, but the first task was, okay, if we want to use those lights, we got to find matching light bulbs. So we went around the office and I don't know exactly how many lamps we looked into, but eventually we found a light bulb that matched the cooler light bulb that was in one of those lamps. And so now we were able to replace the light bulb and have continuity uh, between uh, the two lamp as far as color temperature. Now it still doesn't match the outside. And believe it or not, in this picture that you see here, this is the cooler light bulbs that are in those lamps right now. Uh, this was taken obviously after uh, we were done setting up the shot, but you can, you can tell how much warmer those lamps are. And that's actually kind of what I liked about the shot was the difference between the 56K outdoor color temperature and the warmer feel of those lamps. So we'll have to find a way to deal with that later on when we're ready to do exposure. We'll also tackle white balance. The angle and the framing also dictates where we place our subject and which way they're gonna look into. So in our case, the credenza here and the wall 
they create infinity lines that you can see here. And we want to place our subject in a way that those lines give us the illusion that behind her, the depth continues to expand. So you could use the same technique the other way. If you're shooting something where you want to give the impression of being trapped, of the world coming down on you, right? You would position your subject in a way where the infinity lines are coming closer and closer and closer, giving your viewers that sense of entrapment or, 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 or claustrophobic kind of a feel. Now, that's not our case, right? We don't want to do that. So for us, we're going to place her right here um, in a way that, again, behind her, it looks like that depth continues to grow. And then she's looking off camera towards me sitting in the chair next to the camera. With the shot set, I can now adjust for my exposure. Because I want to keep part of the window in the frame, I need to adjust my camera setting to expose for the window. But my shutter speed was already fixed at 1 60th of a second when we adjust for the light bulb. And my ISO is set as a native ISO to 800. So that only leaves me with aperture to be able to adjust my uh, exposure. I wanted the shallow depth of field, so I opened the aperture as much as possible. Using the built-in variable ND filters and false color, I was able to adjust my aperture and my ND filter to prevent the lamps and the window from peaking. And you can see it here. I'm at the very edge on those two lamps. We can see some orange, a little bit of red here, which is peaking, but very little. And the window here is yellow as well. So now we know that we've exposed the window properly and we're not gonna touch our camera settings again. So we can see that we have an aperture of 2.2 and our ND filter is up to six. Now, before setting up additional lights, I wanna perform a quick white balance and I'm gonna use my white card and place it where the white card will catch both the window light and the light from the practicals. I wanna mix the two color temperature on my white cards so that my image will look as natural as possible. And I wanna preserve some of the warmth from those lamps. And as you can see here on my shot, my white balance came out to be 41K, which makes sense. We have 56 coming from outside, a warmer temperature from those lights. And so we kind of have a mix of both. Now that our exposure and white balance are done, we can work on lighting. I'll place my key light on the same side as where the subject will be looking. The fill side or the darker side of the person's face is always the side closer to the camera. So placing the key light on the same side with the practicals enhance the natural look. Now again, using false color, I can adjust the intensity of the light until the key side of the person's face reaches the correct level. Now make sure to also match the light color temperature to our white balance. So in this case, I'll adjust the key light to be set to 41K. I also use a backlight to separate the subject from the background. And I like to set the backlight to be warmer than the actual color temperature. So in our case, with a color temperature of 41K, I will set that backlight to around 38K, just to give it a little bit more warmth to it. With only half of the fluorescent lights turning off, the fill side of the subject's face was flooded by the fluorescent and it created like this greenish tint on their face because of the tube's color temperature. And so what I did is I used the black side of one of my reflector and use it as a flag. And we we're able to just block any of that green light coming this way from reaching our subject's face. That also helped us to achieve the correct ratio between the key side and the fill side. We didn't need to add neg or another light in order to achieve the correct ratio. That's it, a relatively simple setup, but I hope it gives you a better understanding of the many decisions involved in achieving the desired shot. Thank you for watching this video until the end, and as a token of my appreciation, I'd like to offer you my free camera setting cheat sheet. Just follow the link below to download the free cheat sheet. Thanks again, and happy filming.